Good morning and welcome to 2022. Alex Cole, my friend, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, Tyler? I'm doing great because today we're going to talk about the launch of Go No Go charts on Metastock, which I think is uh, probably the most exciting news I've heard all year. Uh, <laughs> right now, let's dive into what the users of Metastock can expect from Go No Go charts and some of the problems that these are going to solve for them. Now, we have all seen a chart like this. In fact, uh, I've built charts like this uh, that cause analysis paralysis. Uh, in fact, 10 years ago, when I started working at the CMT Association, Ralph Akampora, who's one of the founders, came in to talk to some of the new hires. And he said, uh, when he first started at this other investment firm, he walked around the trading floor, getting to know everybody and glad handing a little bit and came across a young guy who had six vertical monitors with 100 panels on every chart and lines going everywhere. And Ralph leaned over and he said, wow, son, I have never seen technical analysis like that. What is it that you're looking for? And the kid kind of looked both ways and he said, sir, don't tell my boss. I actually have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but he thinks I'm a genius. Now, that's one problem with technical analysis that people want it to be overcomplicated. But Alex, I know your years at Bloomberg uh, introduce you to the other side of the coin, correct? Yeah, uh, often it's not a case of uh, people not knowing what to do. Sometimes you'll talk to an analyst uh, that'll have a very, very good process for understanding their technical analysis. I remember working with sell-side research. Um, and by the time you've gone through the process of including all the technical analysis that you like to look at, they would end up with a chart that was very, very difficult to explain to the buy side or even to, to read themselves. So a, an overcomplicated chart can be a problem in all different situations in technical analysis. Absolutely. And it is a problem uh, that many traders and investors and analysts have found that indicators can sometimes be contradictory, that often add complexity, and it makes the trading decision itself much more difficult. And so what we want to do is eliminate all of that analysis paralysis, but preserve all of the information that's provided by these very important indicators in terms of understanding trend. So Alex, let's talk a little bit about the solution from Go No Go Charts. I know you have spent many years refining this at the, uh, at the right hand of institutional traders, analysts, and portfolio managers. Let's talk a little bit about Go No Go Trend. Absolutely. So the Go No Go Trend uh, came out of that problem. And the idea was to simply blend some of the foundational concepts of technical analysis along with proven statistical measurements into something that could be read by just color coding price action according to the trend strength. And that way we leave price at the forefront and it remains the focus. And we have all of this information that perhaps we feel useful for trend identification. Remember trend identification, arguably the most important skill that we can aspire to in technical analysis. So we can identify the trend using our process, using our checklist. But if we can color code the price bar itself, uh, we leave that price as the focus on the chart. And go to go trend is easy to interpret, right? Because it paints the price bars of the chart without obscuring your view on what price action is doing with this unique mix of inputs. And so when it's slightly less bullish, we're going to see those aqua bars the strongest bullish conditions are going to be in the bright blue bars. And then it, it goes in the reverse when we're in a no-go trend or a bearish condition. We've got pink bars for that uh, weaker condition, weaker trend conditions on the downside, and then strong purple bars. And Alex and I like to refer to those amber bars, that period of neutrality as the go fish conditions. Uh, for all of you who have read Jesse Livermore, you know that there's a time to go long and a time to go short. And then there's a time to go fishing and we want to trade when markets are trending. So Alex, beyond just go, no go trend, I know there's a lot of other research you have done in terms of momentum. Let's talk a little bit about the go, no go oscillator, another piece of the go, no go charts suite. Absolutely. So the oscillator as a sister indicator to the trend, when I, when I started this, I wanted to create a complete overview of the technical situation for any asset, uh, for any time frame. Um, but by keeping the chart as easy to read as possible. But of course, after you've identified trend, most analysts, most of us as technicians will move to momentum to get an idea of enthusiasm of the movement of price, the speed 
of price movement. And so with the go no go oscillator in that lower panel, you can use it as a traditional momentum oscillator. What I mean by that is you can see extremes of overbought and oversold. Um, they will be on our chart ranging from negative six to positive six with extremes at five and negative five. Now, you can also see divergence easily just as you would with a good momentum oscillator. You can see price making higher highs in the top panel and you can see the oscillator making lower highs there on the panel below. What I also wanted to do was include everything that I found valuable in my process. And going back to the days of Charles Dow, we know that volume is used often as a confirmatory tool. So that ribbon along the bottom goes to the dark blue when volume is heavier than usual, when it's heavier than its recent average. So that gives you a sense as well. If you are breaking through that zero line into negative territory on heavy volume, that will sort of give you a little bit more uh, insight into how people are actually buying and selling the stock. Mm -hmm. So that's the traditional way that we'll be, we can use the go no go oscillator. Absolutely. And we know that uh, the importance of overbought and oversold for most momentum indicators uh, can't be overstated. But what about understanding momentum in the context of a trend, Alex? Right. So I was fascinated by this research. A lot of a lot of great work being done by people such as Connie Brown and and, and the, the work done to understand when it's appropriate to use momentum in trend. Uh, like you said, moment, it was originally designed to be giving us um, some kind of uh, valuable ability to mean revert or to find mean reversion situations when price is moving generally sideways in a range bound market. But there is so much value in using these kinds of tools in trend. And what was found was that they will range when you're in a, let's say, a, an up move and something like an RSI, a very well used momentum indicator, will not go from overbought to oversold. If the mm -hmm. trend up is strong, it will go from overbought to neutral. And that makes sense because there will be enthusiasm. There'll be excessive buying when the trend is strong. But it wouldn't make sense for the oscillator to go to oversold. That would tell us that there's very, very heavy selling, which would right. be contrary to a strong up move. The problem, though, with, with trying to interpret these oscillators like that is that they're very, very fast moving. And so we might decide that the range we want to look at is 40 to 80, let's say. But mm -hmm. how do you actually read that? If the oscillator comes down to 41, do you consider that a touch of 40? If it goes to 38, do you consider that a break of that level or is it roughly in the same range? Also for different securities that those levels or those ranges might be different. You might want to look at 35 and 75 on something, 40 and 80 on something else in an uptrend. Right. So what we wanted to do with the go no go oscillator is calculate it in such a way that when the all the inputs, and again, this is a blend of multiple momentum inputs, just like the go-no-go no go trend. So instead of needing to have multiple panels, we just have the one oscillator panel. And it's calculated so that when the inputs to all of the different momentum uh, concepts are in neutral territory, the go-no-go no go oscillator will fall to the zero line when in an uptrend and rise to the zero line when in a downtrend or a no-go. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very important. This gives us an objective level of support and resistance when in trend. And that allows you to stay in trend um, perhaps a little bit better. Absolutely. We've talked to a lot of institutional portfolio managers uh, who... Um who have said this is a business of regret. Oftentimes uh, you get into a position and you just don't hold it long enough. And we know one of the central tenets of trend following investing is that you need to have those outsized winners and be able to cut your losers short. Now, when Wells Wilder was inventing the RSI in the 1970s, think about what US equities markets were doing. That was a very tight range bound market. And the only people who survived were the ones who could understand how to trade that range. Now, uh, for us, thinking about a trend following investment strategy, having that objective zero line is going to tell you when the trend health remains in place and you could even size up a position, but certainly hold your position as that trend continues. 
So Alex, we've talked a lot about the zero line and the oscillator, uh, obviously uh, to be used traditionally as a uh, measure of overbought and oversold to look for those divergences, but that zero line is critical. We're gonna talk about the next piece of the GoNoGo -no -Go suite of tools. In just a minute, we're gonna talk about the GoNoGo -Go squeeze. But I think the, the central thing that I wanna get across today is just how elegant the tools are that you have built, sir. Uh, making sure that in a visual data visualization context, people are getting as much information as possible in the simplest way possible. So right now, I want you to talk to us a little bit about the Go No Go icons that are going to appear right in the price panel uh, so that folks are not distracted but can understand what those icons are telling them. Yeah, and I think the, the importance of the oscillator's interaction with the zero line while in trend uh, was so apparent when talking to clients and talking to, uh, to other analysts that this is where we... Uh, then we worked hard to bring in the go-no-go -no -go icons. We wanted to make sure that that information was being highlighted on the price chart itself as well. Um, so there are two different types of icons that you'll see here. Um, the first are trend continuation icons. Now you'll see these as circles. Uh, when in a go trend, these are the green circles. And when in a no-go, they would be red circles. But these go trend continuation icons highlight the return of momentum in the direction of the trend. So if you think about what we just talked about in terms of the oscillator and the zero line, when a trend is in place and the oscillator hits that zero line and rallies back into positive territory, that's telling us that there is renewed enthusiasm, renewed uh, momentum in the direction of the trend that's in place. So when you see these green uh, circles, that is go trend continuation. Uh, if they were in a no-go, they would be red. The second type of icon that we wanted to highlight, though, was, of course, the traditional use of momentum when we look at charts. They have very, very valuable information. Um, and so we calling these counter trend corrections. So these are the arrows on the chart. And you'll see that when we are in a go trend, they will be red arrows telling us that in the short term, we may see price struggle. It may uh, consolidate sideways. You may see a short counter trend correction because this is the traditional use of a momentum oscillator going overbought in this case when in a go trend. Brilliant. Now, uh, for all investors of all stripes, this is not a uh, one size fits all trading strategy. As Alex mentioned at the beginning, gonna go charts like any great technical indicator are going to work on any time frame and across all asset classes. So you might be trading one minute e mini futures. You might be a long term uh, sector allocation uh, sort of portfolio manager. Uh, the go no go charts are going to work on any asset class over any time period. And so Alex, let's jump ahead and talk a little bit more about when the go no go oscillator is riding the zero line, what we can look for in terms of a volatility squeeze. Yes, so uh, in, in working through all of the different concepts that I wanted to include in the one chart, volatility was a piece that um, that certainly couldn't be neglected. I know from working with, with people throughout our careers in, in institutional finance and technical analysis that looking for volatility squeezes is very important. You probably will have heard or will use uh, things like the Keltner squeeze or looking at Bollinger Bands to see when they narrow to give you a sense of when a breakout will happen and which direction price might move. So that was something that I wanted to include as well. And it's, all, it's already here because of the way the oscillator is constructed. So when the oscillator in trend hits that zero line. If the trend is strong, it'll probably bounce and rally or retreat back in the direction that it came from, uh, suggesting that, as we said, momentum is back in the direction of the trend. Mm -hmm. Now, if the price activity, the volatility of price action shrinks as price consolidates, then the go-no-go -no -go oscillator will, in effect, ride the zero line while the momentum across all of its inputs remains neutral. Mm -hmm. So that's an important situation for us to find and highlight because that, in effect, is a volatility squeeze. So the longer that the go-no-go -go oscillator stays at the zero line, the tighter the squeeze. And we have tried to visually highlight that by creating 
a grid that climbs for every bar that the oscillator remains at zero and then sticks at a max as that squeeze is particularly elongated. So that's the amber climbing grid that we call the go, no, go squeeze in that lower panel. And as, whenever you get a squeeze like that, that the, the reason for looking for something like this is because the ensuing move is often quite substantial and significant in the direction that price breaks. So when we see the break of the squeeze and that squeeze disappears back to nothing, um, that's an important moment right there. And you see in this example that that's followed then by a change in trend when the go gets identified a few bars later. Absolutely. So at the CMT Association, the CMT program that uh, both Alex and I have spent a lot of time working on, uh, what we're talking about is data visualization. But really what we're under, trying to understand is investor behavior. So if we could just review for a second, what we're seeing on the chart is a longer term downtrend. This is continually uh, testing and being rejected at the zero line as momentum comes back into oversold territory. We're in a strong no-go trend on these purple bars. Uh, we're continuing to see uh, the resurgence of momentum in that downward direction, in that no-go trend. Until this point, at which point the, the volatility uh, shrinks and is squeezed. We see that climbing grid telling us that there is a knife fight between buyers and sellers at this level. And we're seeing a bottoming formation in real time. The volatility is there. The go no go oscillator is riding the zero line. We see price contracting to that narrow range. And then we're looking for this critical point right here. Is it going to break back to the downside and we're going to return to that, uh, that no go trend? In this case, it didn't. Momentum broke to the upside. That's a leading indicator of this potential trend change. And of course, momentum piles in as more and more buyers uh, want to enter that trade now that it has uh, broken out. So what we're visualizing here is all of the behavior of investors in real time with a complete technical picture of the market. Uh, Alex, I really I, I, I can't say enough about these tools in both their elegance, simplicity, but also they're comprehensive. They cover every part of the market. Now, what I want to do with you real quick is just look through a couple of examples because with go -no go charts, there's only three things to consider, right? Where is the trend at? What are we looking at in terms of the color of those price bars? Where is the oscillator at? Is momentum confirming or divergent? And then is there anything interesting happening at the zero line? And I just feel that Technical analysis in all of its iterations and the many brilliant men and women of Wall Street and, and elsewhere around the world who've helped create this canon of tools. I want to say that uh, I've never seen something so comprehensive and so elegant as, uh, as GoNoGo -Go charts. So let's, uh, let's do a few examples together, if that sounds all right, Alex. That sounds great. <clears throat> yep. Um, so this is tell the... Us, yeah. Tell us what we're looking at here with the Apple daily chart. So this is the current uh, daily Apple chart. Um, and, and just to just to go back to what you just said, really, it came out of my desire to be able to, to to work with anyone across any industry. That was my role for the longest time, just needing to be able to give complete technical advice to you know an oil trader one day, a, a, a rates trader the next, an equity guy the next. And so so to mm -hmm. be able to just sort of say one, two, three, uh, what's happening on this chart uh, was mm -hmm. was just useful for me. And I think that that's perhaps why uh, people can relate to it. Yeah. And it, um, it tells a story. So this is Apple. This is the current chart. Uh, the trend is a go. We can see that the price bar on the top right is a strong blue bar. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing we would look at is that the oscillator value is at three. So it's in positive territory, but not yet overbought. Mm -hmm. So that, that's a healthy sign for, for the go trend. And then if we think about what's been happening at the zero line, we can see that momentum continues to find support at that zero line from above. So you can see that throughout this move, uh, when we're looking at Apple, uh, the trend has been very well supported by momentum. And that's an ideal sort of trend picture. And mm -hmm. so we will be looking now to see if price moves higher, if, if the oscillator comes back to the zero line, uh, we'll pay attention to it. Brilliant. Very well done. Now, I know the team at Metastock has built incredible tools uh, since the mid-1980s. Um, tell us a little bit about what users on Metastock can find in terms of the expert commentary 
that goes along with these unique charts. Yeah, this was really exciting for me to work with the guys at Metastock to, to create a commentary because really um, what we've given in the commentary is really what we just highlighted on that last slide. So mm -hmm. you'll get a complete uh, interpretation of any security when you pull up the, the commentary. It'll tell you what the trend uh, color is and what that means. It will tell you what the oscillator value is and what that means. It'll also tell you if there are any icons on the chart on the current bar. If mm -hmm. there's a, a counter trend correction arrow or a trend continuation circle, it'll also tell you if there's a squeeze in place. It'll give you the value of the squeeze and tell you whether or not there is a volatility squeeze building. And with those interpretations of the different pieces of the go no go chart i believe that you'll have a complete technical picture as if as if we were sort of looking at those those charts ourselves so the commentary is very exciting uh, to see that on, on metastock to see that built in with explanations right along with the charts now alex uh my teenage self was only interested in three stocks and that's all, that's all i was interested in trading but now, you know, we behave like grown-ups and we want to understand the entire universe of investable securities, including equities, including uh, commodities and fixed income exposure. Now, having a unique, elegant, complete technical picture, that's great. But am I supposed to scroll through 5,000 charts every morning to find those great opportunities? Or has Metastock come up with another solution there too? Yeah, so we were able to take advantage of Metastock's explorations. Um, which is is the way that you screen through um, universes within the platform. And so on Metastock, you can screen for any of those go, no go uh, situations. You can screen for icons, you can screen for the goes and the no goes, and you can screen for the squeezes. And um, yeah. so you can just throw something in there. I think this is, I used the, uh, the S&P 100, the OEX, yep. um, to get a sense of what was happening. And it, you know, out uh, out comes the list of securities, let's say, that are um, in a squeeze or that are giving you a an icon of some sort. And of course, you can then go to the right and open the chart right from there. You can save that as a list. Um, so nicely, you know, full featured uh, screening tool in Metastock's explorations, which really just takes the time to nothing, you know, you, like you said, everybody has their morning routine there. They call it the morning cup of coffee. And if you can go through your universe and all of a sudden you have the seven securities that are a new go, you know, that's a that's a time saver, uh, certainly yeah. to me. <laughs> we know that the success of trading with trends or understanding market trends is why technical analysis is so powerful. We also know that it is 2022 and uh, the pandemic continues and people have a lot on their plate families and, and work obligations. And so to make trading simple and elegant, but also time-saving is got to be critical uh, to actually getting utility out of any of the tools or platforms that you might be using. And so right from that screener, you click into the Disney chart, brings you right to a full screened go, no go chart. Let's do one more example together, Alex, yeah. uh, for the Walt Disney Corporation. Yeah. So this is an interesting chart at the moment. We'll see where it, where it goes, but um, uh, Walt Disney identifying a fresh go. Obviously, um, we see that aqua bar on the right after a uh, what looks like a basing pattern. We've already seen a higher low. Um, we saw the go no go oscillator ride the zero line as price tried to rally off the low and consolidated there. Um, and then we saw it break out of the squeeze into positive territory as price continued to rise. Right now, the oscillator is at a three, so it's not overbought. Uh, it's in it's in positive territory, showing that there's momentum on the side of the trend, mm -hmm. um, and we will we'll be looking um, to see if price can move higher and challenge the highs that we saw earlier on the chart after it broke out of that max squeeze. Brilliant, and and this is something that we could screen for using those uh, explorations. Correct, we could look for those fresh go trends. Yeah, that's one that I I did screen for, and that. that uh, came back. I opened the chart and it looks like a good, you know, it's a good looking chart to take a further peek at. Brilliant. And and of course, your uh, your responsible risk management levels are already built in. Uh, the trend piece is going to identify uh, whether that trend is continuing, but we can also look to uh, momentum in the go, no go oscillator. Uh, let's do one last example, Alex, and then we'll let everybody get back to their day. Uh, yeah. This one is Devon Energy. A uh, really interesting uh, story for the energy space throughout 2021. And uh, I know everybody's got eyes on uh, 
on the oil and gas space here in 2022. What what strikes you on this chart? Yeah, this one was interesting because uh, obviously they've had a really nice pop in price. Um, and what you see then on the very top right of that chart is a counter trend correction arrow. So uh, we see the oscillator is in a, was in overbought territory and has fallen the way back to four. Uh, we see that icon highlighted on the chart. Um, and we see that actually we can quickly tell too that volume has cooled off. We saw a lot of uh, heavy volume in the run up to that breakout. Now there is no blue ribbon at the bottom. Volume mm -hmm. has, has sort of fallen away. We're right. getting that counter trend correction arrow. So I'd be looking at this to see in the short term, do we pull back just a little bit? And then yep. perhaps we'd look at the oscillator as it approaches zero to see if it finds support and give us a nice entry uh, to get into the trend, which obviously is a go at this point. Absolutely. And, and you're highlighting exactly how you would optimize your trading position using these charts. You, you don't want to buy in uh, directly as, as things are leaving overbought extremes, uh, but you want to look for these tools to confirm that indeed the trend is going to stay in place and we can buy back in at a lower level or even increase our position size if we're already holding Devon Energy. Alex, I, I really want to uh, thank you for taking the time today to walk us through Go No Go Charts. What an incredible set of tools that you've built. And uh, I'm really looking forward to working with you and the team at Metastock uh, to help all of the users understand uh, just how they too can simplify their uh, analytical process, avoid some of those emotional moments that we all experience as traders, uh, keep the analysis simple so that we can be disciplined uh, investors. So with that, I'll say uh, stay safe, be well, and uh, looking forward to seeing you again real soon, my friend. Thank you, Tyler.